Currently, our client application makes GraphQL queries and mutations against our GraphQL server. But queries and mutations, those are only two out of the three main operations with GraphQL. The last operation that we haven't covered yet is subscriptions. So what's going to happen is our GraphQL client is going to execute a GraphQL subscription for an event against our GraphQL server. And whenever that event occurs on our server, the server is going to push the event data down to the client. And since we're using GraphQL here, the client can ask for the exact data that it needs out of that event data from the server. And we will see that in this demo because our GraphQL server now has subscriptions on its schema. So we have a course created event that we can subscribe to and a course updated event that we can subscribe to as well for a specific course ID. So we'll see both of those. Let's head down to the client. I have my server running in the background now so we can hit it. And as we just saw, we have subscriptions on our schema, but our client currently does not know about those subscriptions. So let's head down into the terminal. Let's open our client folder in the terminal and we're gonna do a .NET GraphQL update so that we can pull down the updated schema from our server and get our subscription type on that schema. So let's run that. And here we go, schema updated. We have a course created event and a course updated event that we will subscribe to. Next up, we need to create GraphQL documents for these subscriptions so that Strawberry Shake knows to generate code so that we can execute these subscriptions. So similar to how we have queries and mutations in their own folders, we're gonna have another folder for subscriptions and this will hold the query documents for our subscriptions. These are .graphql files. So we're gonna have a course created subscription .graphql so that we can subscribe to the course created event. This is not a class, get rid of all this. And then let me just copy this and rename it to course updated subscription. And these are the two subscriptions that we are gonna make. So first off, we have to define our operation as a subscription, so not a query or mutation, a subscription. And we have to name this subscription. We're gonna call this course created. And the event that we're subscribing to is the course created event. So we see that on our schema here. So paste that in there. And what data are we gonna get back whenever course created is raised? we can see on our schema that the data that comes back is a course result and that has the course ID, name, and subject of the created course. So it also has instructor ID, but I'm just gonna grab ID, name, and subject so we can specify those here, ID, name, and subject. And that should be everything we need for Strawberry Shake to generate this subscription. So let me just copy all of this and move over to course updated. We're gonna knock out both of these subscription documents right off the bat but this one is gonna be called the course updated subscription. And we're gonna to subscribe to course updated, which is the name of the event on our schema. And this event also gives us back a course result. We're just gonna grab the same exact properties as course created, but we do have to account for this course ID parameter. So what we have to do is when we define this subscription, we're gonna create a variable for the course ID and the type of this is a UUID and is non-nullable given the exclamation point. So this type also matches what we have defined on our schema. And then we're gonna specify this parameter on our event. So the course ID parameter, and the name of this comes from how it's named on our schema, is going to equal the course ID variable that we just created. So we'll be able to subscribe to whenever a specific course ID is updated and also whenever a course is created. So this should be everything that Strawberry Shake needs to generate the code to subscribe to these events. So let's go ahead and look at our generated code and then let's go ahead and do a build which should generate the code to do these subscriptions. Although we're probably gonna run into the same result that we always run into where we actually have to move our subscription documents to the root of our project. So I do not see anything related to subscriptions in here. Let's go ahead and move these subscription documents to the root of our project and build again. And let's do a search for subscription. Okay, so here we go. The code was generated, but we do have some errors in this document. So if we look at our errors down here, the type of namespace name WebSockets does not exist in the namespace strawberryshake.transport. And that is because when we set up this project, 
the only transport that we added was HTTP, but subscriptions are served over WebSockets, so we are going to have to add a NuGet package for WebSockets with Strawberry Shake. So let's search for Strawberry Shake, and here we go, we got strawberryshake.transport.webSockets. Let's install that, and that should have resolved all the errors in our generated code. So that means when we configure our Strawberry Shake generated code in our services, not only do we have to configure an HTTP client, as we do here, that points to our GraphQL server, but we also have to configure a WebSocket client for subscriptions that points to our GraphQL server as well. So we have to configure the URI for our WebSocket client to point to our GraphQL API. And we actually have an issue here with our configuration. So this GraphQL API URL that we load from our app settings.json the protocol we have specified here is HTTP, but for WebSockets, we actually want this to be WS for WebSockets. So we could just have another app settings entry here for the WebSockets URL. But I think what I'm gonna do instead is just remove the protocol here. And then when we pass these URLs into our client configurations, we can just specify the protocols here. So first off, we'll have the HTTP GraphQL API URL, and that'll just be HTTP colon slash slash. So specifying our protocol here, and then our regular GraphQL API URL, which no longer has the protocol. And then we'll have our WebSockets GraphQL API URL. And here we'll just specify the protocol as WS for WebSockets. So we'll pass that in to their corresponding configurations. And now we should be good to go for WebSockets. So our start method is still kind of messy. We're making our queries. We're making our mutations. Now we just need to make our subscriptions. So down here, we're going to take our client and we're going to take our course created event that we can subscribe to. We're going to watch it and then we're going to subscribe. So this subscribe method takes an eye observer for our operation result. So what you could do is you could implement this iObserver interface on some kind of class and that'll handle all of the notifications that we get from the subscription. But what I like to do instead, and I think this is way easier, is use system.reactive so that we can just specify a callback in the subscribe method. And in my opinion, it's way easier to read, write, and understand. So let's go to our NuGet packages and let's search for system.reactive. This is previously known as reactive extensions, as we see right here, reactive extensions for .NET. So we can install that. So now if we look at this subscribe method, we have tons of overloads on here. And most importantly, we have an overload that takes an action with our operation result. So that's what we're going to use. And that is just a callback. And we can open this up and just do whatever we want with our result. So if we look at the result, we get data we get errors and we didn't have to implement a custom observer class, which maybe there are benefits to that, but I just feel like this is much simpler. So let's look at this data. We're not going to do any error handling right now. I'm just going to dig straight into the data. We got our course created data and let's look at the name of the created course and let's actually print that out to the console. So we'll do a console right line and we'll just say course and then place the course name in here was created so that should handle course created notifications now how about course updated so let's look at that subscription and we're going to watch and this is where we pass in the course id so we already have one of those in this variable where is that from that is from when we execute our create course mutation but one thing we do is we actually delete that course so let me just comment this out so not going to delete the course so that we can actually update it and we're going to subscribe to these updates pass in a callback again let me just copy everything that we did for course created except we're getting our course updated data now and we'll say course and actually put in the course id so doing course id instead of name because the name might change as part of the update so i feel like this will make more sense and we'll say course course id was about renamed to and then put the name in there. Even though the name might not change as part of the update, but at least for when we demo this, 
we are going to be changing the name so this will make sense of course this is just for debugging purposes anyways we just want to see these subscriptions in action all right so we should be good to go let's put breakpoints in each of these subscription callbacks so that we can see them get executed and let's go ahead and run this oh, and i'm also going to put a breakpoint at the end of my application so that i can get this course id value because i'm going to need that to execute the update so let's go ahead and grab that. So just copy it and we can continue with the application. So we've reached the end, but our subscriptions are still watching those events. So let's head over to Banana Cake Pop. So this is the playground where we can manually execute GraphQL requests. So I have one scaffolded out to create a course and another one to update a course. So first, let's go ahead and create a course. And we've hit our breakpoint in Visual Studio. So course was created, the course name was algorithms. So we can continue and looking at the console, course algorithms was created. And that is indeed the name of the course that I specified. So the create course subscription seems to be working perfectly. Let's head on over to update course. So the course ID that we're watching for updates on is the course ID that I have on my clipboard. So let me paste that in there, get rid of these dashes on our GUID. So we're updating that course to be named chemistry, subject science, and we got some random instructor ID in here. So let's execute this and boom, hit our callback immediately. So the new course name is chemistry. So write that out to the console. So the course and then the course ID was renamed to chemistry. So our subscriptions are working. Our server is pushing these notifications down to our client in real time, and we can handle that incoming data however we wish. So we've made our subscriptions. Just to summarize, first we grabbed our updated schema from our GraphQL server so we could get our subscription types on here. Then we created GraphQL documents that Strawberry Shake would use so that we could execute these subscriptions and watch for these events. And I actually forgot to move these back into my subscriptions folder. Let me bring that back. So include that in the project and just move these documents into that folder. There we go, all good. So after that, we installed a package so that we could get WebSockets configured on our GraphQL client. And then we configured our WebSocket client and had to specify a WebSocket URL, which points to our GraphQL server. And then after that, we simply used the Strawberry Shake generated code to subscribe to those events on our server. And we saw that we did indeed receive notifications whenever the corresponding events occurred on the server. So our application is still kind of a mess, but hopefully in the near future, we'll start to clean this up, especially since now we've covered the three main operations of GraphQL, queries, mutations, and subscriptions. So hopefully you can apply subscriptions to your own application. Personally, I think it's really exciting to see data get pushed from the server to the client in real time. But anyways, if you have any questions, criticisms, or concerns, be sure to leave them below in the comment section. If you enjoyed the video or are enjoying the channel, consider becoming a member. Other than that, leave a like or subscribe for more. Thank you.